I started being a photographer probably when I graduated university but really the whole story begins when I was at college um, back in Colchester uh, where I chose to study photography as an A-level, AS level and really had no interest in it before, didn't know anything about the history of it, how to take a photograph, I'd used a point and click camera and things and it was just through studying and learning from teachers and being inspired by photo books in a library that really my photographic education started and then it graduated gradually got to university level and then you start understanding about how to become a photographer. You get to a point when studying where you realise that you need to make a career out of it and you can make a career out of it, you can be an artist or whatever and, and um, really when I graduated in 2009 then I started being a photographer. Fine started, or didn't start as fine, it actually started when I left university I realised that I didn't quite know what I was going to do photographically. Um, so I was continuing interning for other people and I needed something to do. I didn't have an idea for a project and um, I also didn't have the money that I had when I was at university through loans and so on to afford film processing or buying any film. So I actually had a small little Canon and every, I said to myself, I'm just going to take pictures of everything that I find interesting. And then from that, I could try and find something. Um, and then while I was at photo work and they were just asking me you know what are you doing at the moment and I said I'm doing anything I'm, not ta I'm taking pictures but there's no reason for them so they asked to see something so I put an edit of these pictures of these objects that were just on the street that I found interesting and they just said well you should do something with that about kind of editing the work down coming up with a, some kind of concept or, or what how to represent it and the intention was to try and put these pictures back onto the street so we were going to print the pictures out and just dump them, you know, and just put pictures up on the street. And I, we came to the agreement that, you know, we should make something a bit more slicker than that. And the newspaper was born. So Finds is now a collection of images that are taken every two years of found objects on the street and presented in a newspaper and then put on the street for free. And there's no profit, no money made into it. It's a bit of artwork. And I kind of see each newspaper as an exhibition in itself. Mm. So every two years in Brighton, there's a fringe festival. And I'm in the f each fringe festival with 5,000 copies of the Fines newspaper, which get for a week put around in different locations. And then a few months after the fringe festival, I take them up to London and I put them in a certain amount of places around London. And from there, then people can pick them up, leave them where they are, pass them on and do what they wish with them. Well, fines, the, de the, the reason I call them fines one and fines two is just to differentiate between the two papers. Fines actually is an ongoing series. There's no sequel, there's no next one or anything. It's just a continuation. It's another edition, it's another issue. It's like a magazine series, if, if you like. After the first newspaper was published and the response people gave me, it was a kind of a kick into understanding that this could be something I could do continuously. It wasn't just a single body of work. I never felt like it was finished, so I continued taking pictures. Um, there was nothing that I needed to readdress in the first one because it was just a really a, like a starting block. And Finds 2 was really a, a progression within the way of I found these things on the street. And wherever I go out, if it's daylight outside, I'm constantly looking and I always have a camera in my bag now. What finds one was privately funded from my, by myself um, and then when finds two came around I couldn't actually do that, I wasn't in a financial position to do that so I decided to use crowdfunding and it completely funded the newspaper. The 5,000 editions of paper was completely paid for by the people that funded and supported me via Indiegogo and I chose to do that because I actually thought it would be nice to communicate with people about the project and try and put it out there and, and, and create a buzz before it happened, rather than just releasing it again and people wouldn't know about it beforehand. And I will do it again. I'll do it again for the third one and the fourth one and the fifth one, because it's, it's such a nice way to engage. And um, then when you're asking people to fund something, which is then going to be free for other people, it's, it's a great kind of communal kind of thing where you're not saying to people, give me £5,000 or anything and then I'll go and sell a book on and make some profit. Where it's nice, it's integral for people to do that because they've got to make a living. But 
I think it's something really nice to use a funding platform to get money and then to then use it to spread a bit of artwork out and give people something back for free.